So it's important to know how to graph in science, and in this section, you're gonna be doing um, a graphing practice on evolution. Um, some important pieces with this is please make sure that you list a title. That's really important. Um, I'm gonna have you come up with that on your own. And then make sure to um, label your X and your Y axis. So for me on this, I'm going to take this data and here in this data, you have um, a depth in the layer in meters. So, and then here are the different types of fossils. Here's the clam fossils, the fish number of fossils, and the number of insect fossils in each layer depth. So I'm gonna say um, number of fossils on the y-axis and on the x-axis, I am going to list the um, depth in meters. Uh, please make sure you always have a legend. So I'm going to do um, clam fossils in blue. So I'm going to do, um, this is the number of clam fossils. And then I'm going to do, let's say um, in green, I'm gonna do insects. So I'm gonna do number of insect fossils. And I'm sorry that this is so poorly drawn um, for you here. And then I'm going to do, let's say, and let me color this so that I remember I did insects in green. And then here I will do in red, this number of fish fossils. So, um, I'm writing kind of sideways here, number of uh, fish fossils. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is take these numbers that are here and I'm going to um, draw this out here. Maybe I'll go up one, two, three, four, five and make this the 10 line. One, two, three, four, five, this can be um, 20, um, one, two, three, four, five, this can be 30, and you can proceed up the way. Then to label the uh, x-axis, say I'll do, um, you know, one, two, three, four, five, and this will be um, a depth of, let's say, um, well, let's say every two is one meter, maybe one meter, two meters, three, four, five, six, and seven meters. Okay, so now I have my graph all labeled um, and I'm going to put the data in. So to put the data in, I am going to take the, since I'm holding red, I'm just gonna graph red first. I'll say the number of fish in zero to 1.5 meters was two. So between zero and 1.5, the number of, and I'll just put this on the, on the one, um, was at, uh, there was two, two fish fossils. So not very much. So since I skipped here, every, every line is worth about two. So I'm going to put my first right here for fish. Then my second one is um, at the three line, the line for three, I'm going to put 12 fish fossils. So at three, I'm gonna go over to three and up to the number 12, 10 and 12. So at the number three, I'm gonna go up to 12 and I'm gonna put a dot there. For um, the layer 3.5, so that's right here between the three and the four, there were 35. So I've done all those. So between the three and the four, there were 35, that's a lot. Um, so I'm gonna put it about right here, okay? And I'm going to connect these as I go along and make this line. Then at the five mark, 
we're up to 34. So I'm gonna go all the way up to about 34, um, which is a slight, slight dip, and then up to 50 at the seven mark. So 50, I don't know where that's gonna be exactly, but we'll say it's somewhere up here, okay? And you're gonna connect that. You're gonna do that for insect fossils and for clam fossils. I will put on there the first dot for each of those. So insect fossils, you're, I'm gonna grab my blue for, or my green teal that I did. And for insects fossils, I'm gonna go um, over to the 1.5, which we started on the one line and go up to 27. So I'm gonna go up here, almost to 30, but right about there. And I'm gonna put my first teal dot. And for clams, there is only three on that first line. So for clams, I'm gonna stay really low right here for clams. Okay, so then on the second page, um, after you've drawn this whole graph, I'm not gonna go through that all with you, you're gonna answer these questions. The dependent variable is um, so the independent um, variable, the things that didn't change was the depth in the meters. So the dependent variable, the thing that changed up our y-axis was this right here. You're labeling right here. The number of fossils is your dependent variable. That's the thing that changed each time. Um, at what level could we expect to find the most insects? So you're gonna go to your insects, your, your teal, and you're gonna find the teal line and find where that teal line got uh, the biggest. And um, you know, I only graphed one dot here, but it'll make a whole line. And wherever it was the biggest, you're gonna write down for that teal, the number of insects. Um, then the next question is, um, compared to the other types of animals, what type of environment do you think was present at the level of zero to 1.5? So at the zero to 1.5, what we have is a lot of insects, not very many clams, and not very many fish. These guys need a water environment, so at this time there was more insects than, than clams and a fish. So it was probably, if these require water and insects require usually land, it was probably a land environment. However, we also know about insects. Insects survive better when it's not freezing, right? So um, there probably wasn't ice. So you could say that it probably was a warm environment. Um, some, in, some insects do better where it's moist, um, like in the rainforest, you get a lot more. So you would probably say there was, there was a land. Um, you could guess that it was probably a moist environment. You could probably guess that it was warm um, and no ice since there is the most of the insects. Then um, the next question is, oh, why did you choose that? And you can explain your answer. The next one is why is the average number of fossils, or what is the average number of fossils found at five meters? To find the average number of fossils from five meters, you could go over here to the five and find all the, where the, all the dots crossed and average it, or you can just come up here and say, okay, at five, there was this many fossils, four plus 34 plus three. What is four plus 34 plus three? You're gonna add those three numbers together and you're gonna divide it to find the average. You add the three numbers together and then divide by three. So four plus 34 plus three, add those together and then divide by three. That is going to be the average number of fossils at five meters. Why do you think there were few clam and insect fossils at six meters. So, so we haven't graphed it all yet, but it's saying there weren't very many clams or insects 
um, at the six meters. So what happened that, you know, clams like it where it's sometimes dry during the day and sometimes wet and insects need it, um, not, you know, a land environment. So if it was just fish that were really doing well here, what do you think happened um, to the earth during that time period? Um, if things that need like a half land, half water wasn't doing well and things that need land weren't doing very well, um, why were fish doing really well um, there? So you're gonna write that up. Um, what period of geologic time did the data come from? I will just give you this. You could Google search this, but I'm going to tell you it is from the Cretaceous and um, Cretaceous uh, period. Of the various methods of fossil dating, which one has been used here for these fossils and why? So here they just are listing layers. Um, and here you can see them talking about that. The layers are recorded on top from the lowest. Well, there's relative dating, which deals with layers. And then there is radiometric dating, which measures the decay of the particles in it. Well, this is obviously dealing with the layers. So this is relative dating. And then you have to take a good guess on why they used that dating method here instead of the radiometric dating. Okay, thank you so much and good luck as you move through that.